Today, I want to talk about luck. Specifically, I want to talk about when that rabbit's foot isn't exactly on your side. We all know those people who blame their sporting misery on their team having bad luck, rather than them just being plain bad. I feel like NBA fans are the worst for this, always making excuses for why their team lost or why another team won. We're seeing this with the Celtics right now. So many NBA fans are saying that the Celtics are lucky for making the finals, when actually they're just really good at basketball. But anyways, this Celtics talk inspired me to find out which fan bases have an actual claim to being unlucky. I looked at the past 15 seasons of the NBA and used three different metrics to discover which franchises have four leaf clovers and which have broken a few too many mirrors. So let's get into it. So starting off, the first thing I looked at was the NBA draft lottery. Having luck at the draft lottery is so important. It can really decide the future of franchises. For example, the Spurs wouldn't have a dynasty without the luck of moving up two spots to draft Tim Duncan in the 97 lottery. On the other hand, the Grizzlies might still be in Vancouver if they didn't fall two spots in the Allen Iverson sweepstakes of 1996. Safe to say, lottery luck is crucial. To calculate this kind of luck, I looked at the past 15 draft lotteries and calculated a plus minus for each team. If they moved up two spots, I added two. If they moved down three spots in the next lottery, I subtracted three. Pretty simple. I decided not to account for trades because we're purely talking about luck here, not about front office moves. So the Clippers, for example, got a plus seven in the 2011 lottery, even though they traded that pick to the Cavs, which eventually became Kyrie Irving. Which, side note, imagine Kyrie on those Lob City teams. But anyways, here are the results for all 30 NBA franchises. Links in the description for all the charts in this video if you want to check them out yourself. But a few things that stand out to me are that first, in 2016, there were no changes in the lottery, going completely chalk. It's the only draft to ever do this, and it's honestly pretty fitting for a draft that had loads of quality talent like Jamal Murray, Brandon Ingram, Jalen Brown even, but it never really had an absolute megastar kind of player. I think it's also pretty surprising that the Lakers have moved up the most, considering they have like zero homegrown talent on their roster, excluding like Austin Reeves and Max Christie I guess. Of course, a big part of that is having a win now mentality with LeBron. For example, they didn't use that 2019 pick they moved up 7 spots for, they traded that pick instead to New Orleans in the Anthony Davis trade. But still, I guess the Lake Show has had a pretty good time at the lottery. On the other side, and perhaps unsurprisingly, the Pistons have had horrible lottery luck. I'm talking like a black hat saying Macbeth while opening an umbrella inside kind of bad luck. They've dropped 7 more spots than anybody else, with 2 straight years having the best odds and then dropping to number 5. Due to those drops, they missed out on Victor Wembanyama, Paolo Bancaro, Chet Holmgren, Brandon Miller just in those 2 years alone. People wonder why Detroit is having such a miserable time, and this is a key reason why. So just to summarize, the 5 teams with the worst lottery luck are the Houston Rockets, Orlando Magic, Phoenix Suns, New York Knicks, and then of course, the Detroit Pistons. Next, I looked at injuries. Of course, injuries are not all matters of chance. Facilities, trainers, playing time are all factors in players' health but there's no denying that luck plays a key role in deciding the injury report. Like the lottery, I looked at the past 15 seasons, but this time I added up each team's injuries. When I first started this, I thought it was going to be a lot easier. I thought surely that somebody must have tallied the injuries by teams per year, but no, I couldn't find anything like that. So I had to do it myself. For each year of each team, I looked at the missed games of their top six players in minutes per game. I only did the top 6 cause first off, doing the whole roster would have taken ages, and second, I thought looking at starters in a 6 man would be a good litmus test for how unlucky a team is with injuries. Even with only doing the top 6 players, this took me over 3 days to do. If I knew how long this would have taken, I probably would have done it a different way, but oh well, too late. A couple of notes on these calculations. If a player got traded mid-year, I didn't count their first game missed as that clearly was more for travel reasons than injury reasons. Second, in the case of players missing an entire season, a la Alonzo Ball or Chet Holmgren, I did include them if I thought they would have been in the top 6 of minutes per game. With the exception of Kevin Durant in 2020, 
as Brooklyn already knew he was going to be out the whole year when they signed him, so I didn't really count that as luck. Third, I included suspensions, because even if it's more uh, based off a of player's actions than luck, having a player suspended is unlucky for the team, and we're talking about franchises here. And then finally, this doesn't really take into account load management. So with all this being said, you can probably figure out that this list is far from perfect, and I probably made quite a few mistakes, but I do think that this chart does give a good and very interesting look into the injury history and luck for all teams. So here's the chart. The columns in a different color are the years that didn't have 82 games in the season, meaning of course there were less games available to miss. Anyway, so looking at this, what strikes me first is that injuries have clearly been on the rise. There were over a thousand more missed games this year than in the 09-10 season, which shows the current NBA definitely has an injury or at least a missed games problem. The team with the most missed games in a single season was actually this year's Memphis Grizzlies. Even if you took out Josh's suspension, this would be the case. I feel like people have kind of forgotten about Memphis, but with a healthy team and a top 10 pick, Look out next year for the Grizzlies. I could see them even making a finals run. The team with the least amount of games missed in a single year were the 09-10 Suns with just 6. Imagine if a team today had their starters and their 6 men only missed 6 games the entire year. Phoenix won 54 games that season, which probably really isn't a surprise. The Suns may have been unlucky in the lottery, but with injuries, they seem to be pretty good. This chart is super interesting, and I'll probably make a whole separate video just running through all of it. But for today's purposes, the five teams with the worst injury luck are the LA Clippers, Golden State Warriors, Charlotte Hornets, Chicago Bulls, and the New Orleans Pelicans. Finally, I looked at buzzer beaters. Losing on a last second bucket is obviously one of the most heartbreaking things in sports. Your team has come so far, being so close, just to lose because of one shot. To evaluate luckiness, I made a plus minus chart of NBA team's buzzer beater's fortune. Using basketball references, I tallied each time a team won and lost via a buzzer beater from the 09-10 season to today. I also decided to give double points if that shot happened in the playoffs, because winning and losing in the postseason is obviously worth a lot more. Here's an example. The 76ers have won 4 games off buzzer beaters in the past 15 years, while losing on 4. Of course, one of those being the Kawhi buzzer beater shot in the 2019 playoffs. So 4 winning minus 4 losses with an additional point lost for losing in the playoffs gives the Sixers a plus minus of minus 1. Doing this for all 30 NBA teams gives you this chart. As you can see, New Orleans are allergic to buzzer beaters for some reason. They are tied for both the least amount of buzzer beaters scored for and against. I also find it funny that the three teams that Paul George played for are in the bottom 10, so maybe there is some truth to that narrative. Also, it's clear that the Mavericks have a flair for the dramatic, with Dallas being involved in 24 total buzzer beaters. Hopefully, this drama continues in this year's finals. So to summarize, the five teams with the worst buzzer beater luck are the Toronto Raptors, Indiana Pacers, Detroit Pistons, New York Knicks, and the Phoenix Suns. So let's combine these rankings to find out which team is truly the unluckiest. Now, warning, math will be involved, but I'll make the explanation as short as possible. So basically, since all three rankings are on a different scale of data sets, we need to use something called the normalization formula, where we put each value on a scale from 0 to 1 where 0 is the luckiest and 1 is the unluckiest. After using this formula on each stat, we then add up the 3 different values to get an unluckiest score out of 3. For example, Boston has these values for each stat. After using the normalization formula, they turn into this. Then adding them up, Boston gets a score of 1.078 out of 3. Now to make it a tad bit easier to understand, I then converted each team's unluckiest score from out of 3 to out of 100. And after all that, you get this list of the unluckiest NBA teams of the past 15 seasons. Now again, links in the description if you want to analyze this, or you can just pause the video. But let's just focus on the 5 unluckiest NBA teams. According to these metrics, the Detroit Pistons are the unluckiest team in the NBA over the past 15 years which makes quite a bit of sense. 
Motor City has had an extremely rough time in this era, with just two playoff appearances, both resulting in sweeps. They haven't been able to really build anything with their horrible lottery luck, and when they have looked semi-decent, injuries got the worst of them. Especially Blake Griffin, who practically carried that team to the playoffs in 2019, playing amazing basketball, but then missing more than half the next season with injury and never really being the same. Hopefully whatever curse is on Detroit is lifted, and the Pistons can finally start winning basketball again. The next unluckiest team is the Knicks, which again, makes sense. I would say their unluckiest moment was in the 2019 lottery, where they were projected to go number one and draft Zion after winning only 17 games that year. The Knicks fans hoped that drafting Zion would attract Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving in free agency, but unluckily, they never got the chance to make that pitch, as they ended up falling two spots to number three, ending that super team idea for good. Chicago and Phoenix are next. The Bulls have had massive injury problems, with the likes of Derrick Rose and Lonzo Ball, while the Suns have been pretty unlucky with both the lottery and buzzer beaters. And then, you get to a very interesting discovery. The Golden State Warriors, winners of four championships and arguably the best team of all time, were statistically the fourth unluckiest NBA team in the past 15 years. And when you think about it, Golden State have been pretty unlucky. They lost the 2020 first overall pick with the best odds, they missed arguably their second most important player, Klay Thompson, for two whole years, Steph has been injured many times, KD got hurt in the 2019 finals, Draymond suspensions. For a dynasty, it certainly hasn't been all smooth sailing. But of course, the Warriors haven't let their bad luck bring them down. Instead, they won four NBA championships. Now, if you flip these rankings, they also show why luck isn't everything. The Sacramento Kings are ranked the luckiest team of the past 15 seasons. The Kings, the team with the second worst record in the last 15 years, are the luckiest? Well, when you think about it, their losses come down more to bad management than bad luck. The most budding example of this is in the 2017 and 2018 draft. In two straight years, the Kings moved up five spots in the lottery. They're the only team with two moves of five or more up in the past 15 years, yet they didn't exactly take advantage of this massive luck. The 2017 pick, the number three pick that year, was lost in a 2015 pick swap deal to Philly. Philly then traded that Kings pick to Boston, and who did they pick? Somebody called uh, Jason Tatum? The next year, in 2018, the Kings at least managed to keep the pick that turned out to be the second overall after again having lottery luck. But um, they drafted Marvin Bagley Jr. And with the next pick, Luka Doncic was selected. Yes, if the Kings actually capitalized on their good luck, they could have had both Jason Tatum and Luka Doncic, who are now battling in the finals for different teams. I think that the Warriors and Kings show that it doesn't really matter if you have all the good or bad luck in the world. It's what you do with the cards you're dealt that really counts. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know who you think are the unluckiest NBA teams. If you enjoyed this video, please like and even subscribe. See you next time.